Hi, Facebook friends. Uh, the video blog this week, I want to share with you an account that happened in the mid-1990s uh, where I had opportunity to officiate at a funeral. Uh, it, was a, it was obviously a very sad occasion. Uh, the young lady who died was 26 years old, had a three-year-old. Um, she took her own life. Uh, she had struggled with depression. She would struggled with bipolar. Uh, and what happened, uh, I didn't know this person at all, uh, but her boyfriend's mother went to a church in Lancaster and that pastor, uh, knew me and called and said, since you're down in the Southern end there, and that's where this, uh, this tragic thing took place, I, would you go visit? And, and I said, sure, I, I would do that. Um, wasn't looking forward to it by any stretch, didn't know the folks and certainly the circumstances were dire and, um, but I met with the family, I met with, uh, uh, the boyfriend and, and, uh, we decided, uh, about a funeral service that it would take place at a, at a, a sportsman's farm, uh, Dixie, who that was her name, wasn't churched, if you will, necessarily, um, she was part of a motorcycle group and, and, uh, so we, the feeling was the best setting was at the sportsman's farm and all. And, uh, so there was some trepidation on my part because here's this little church guy, you know, uh, coming in and, um, and I taught the day of school. It was a Thursday and I taught the day of school and, and I, I went to the sportsman's farm and all these motorcycles lined up and I walk in. There's a lot of leather, a lot of black. And, you know, we stereotype about things like that. Um, the leader of that group, uh, called me in and said, Blake here. And we went to the kitchen and they had four kegs there. He said, would you like a drink, but would you like a beer before we, we, before we start? And I said, no, no, that's okay. Uh, those of you who know me, I, I don't drink at all, but he was very polite, very hospitable. Would you like to? Uh, and he said, this is where we're going to be. And they went, took me to a big room and I was, went up front and, and to get things started, this, this guy, uh, this host, he, he just hollered, uh, real loud to everybody, attention, and, and, and he said, uh, beers down, butts out. Well, I about started laughing on, on that, but it certainly wasn't a laughing time. And so I shared the gospel of Christ with these people that, that many of us may look at as a, as a rougher crowd and, and unchurched. And I had khaki pants on and a blue shirt and a tie, and I, 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 felt overdressed to be honest with you and uh and I began to share and, and talk about uh, Dixie's life and what I'd learned from folks and and I talked about Jesus and I talked about the gospel of peace and 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 gave my my message and prayed over the folks that had gathered and there's probably 125 people there um and uh I finished up and during my prayer time I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me Blake you need to ask them if they have any questions and and so I began, and I simply said, do any of you have any questions for me today? Uh, and a gentleman in the back raised his hand, and uh, he said, did Dixie have any chance of getting to heaven uh, because of the way she took her life? And we were very careful about that because her three-year-old was walking around um, there at the at the, the venue, and, and and I answered that question. And, and by the way, I, I don't believe suicide necessarily in and of itself causes us to lose heaven because it's what we've done with Christ. And, and I don't know what it's like to get in that broken spot. So difficult. And, and, but I answered that question. And then for 45 minutes, I answered other questions. This crowd that I went in looking at, whoa, this is a rough crowd. What? I'm not sure they're going to want anything to do with church and all that. For 45 minutes, they asked me questions about the Bible, about Christianity, about church. And, and I, I, it was amazing. It was thrilling, actually. And the last question I got, uh, a guy, he, he raised his hand. I called him. He said, I want to ask you something, Blake. And by now, after 45 minutes of question and answer, uh, 20 minutes of a funeral service, they felt, I think, like they knew me really pretty well. And, and, and this guy says, Blake, what if all of us show up at your church? Now I said, we'd welcome you with open arms. We, we'd be excited about it. And the whole room erupted. I said, no, I'm actually serious, man. You ride in there with those bikes. I would love you to ride in with the bikes. It'd be good for our people. Anyway, after that, uh, you know, we closed things out. And um, I got two compliments that day. Uh, a gal came up to me, and, and I'm not sure. She hadn't had a little bit too much to drink. Uh, but she gave me the, the, the most blessed but most unique 
compliment ever. She looked at me and she told me I was bleeping good. And I was like, thank you. And, and I just appreciated your, your feeling that way. And, and then one of the guy I actually knew from school, uh, Ronnie came up to me and was very kind. He goes, Blake, thanks for not giving us any crap. Uh, only he didn't say crap, of course. I, I tell you those things. I tell you those things because sometimes we analyze people's lives and sometimes we, make value judgments and, and 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 sometimes we look and say these people are whatever they are and and what i learned really really up in my face that day uh was something that later chris lenhard put to words uh people don't need us to analyze their situation as much as they need us to care and boy did i find it that day you know that they, they didn't need me to evaluate who they were and what they were about. They they didn't need me. To, they needed me to be honest and open and just to love them where they were. Because something else I've learned too, we we can't expect believers, or I should say, we can't expect people that are non-believers, people that aren't following Christ, to act like believers. I, I think we can expect common courtesy. I think we can expect being polite, but we can't really expect people to. To act like followers of Christ if they don't have the Holy Spirit because they aren't followers of Christ. And we certainly need to let that go sometimes. But the other thing, we always have to expect believers and always encourage believers to act like followers of Christ and to care for people. And so I share that with you today because I walked in with some trepidation, to be honest. Like, what did I get myself into? And I left with 125 new friends that just wanted me to be be genuine with them. Be honest with them. And yes, to give them some hope in Christ Jesus. A great lesson that I probably got home that day and I was walking about 18 to 24 inches off the ground because the Holy Spirit had come and, and ministered care. Two pieces to the end of, of that account. There was a young man that called me. This happened all in the month of March. And a young man called me on Christmas Eve. And he he called the house and he said, Blake, you don't know me. My name's Mark, but I was at Dixie's service. And I was just wondering if it was okay if I came to Christmas Eve service at your church. Mm. Reason I get choked up. This young man wasn't sure he was worthy or okay that he could come to our church. I said, Mark, I would love you to be there. I I'd love you to come to Christmas Eve tonight. Mark came to Christmas Eve. I remember he sat in the back, but he was there early. And as I came in and, and, and I visited with him and sat and talked and we revisited what had happened nine months earlier, what a blessing it was. And that little girl, that three-year-old Dixie's daughter, I've gotten to know and see from time to time. And like all of us, uh, we have our deals, but each time I see her, I get a smile, I get a hug. And I recognize that the Lord Jesus, he, he wants us with the crowd. It may not be the church crowd, and that's okay. In fact, I think it's better when it's not. That we would be a blessing to other people. So we don't need to analyze. Uh, we, we don't need to, to try to evaluate, uh, although that might help them when we give them care. But the number one thing is what I've found out is we simply have to love people. Might there be a blessing in that for you? God bless. Have a wonderful day in Jesus.